Thanks for everyone for joining the combined SMB Solutions Dato webinar. We'll hand over to our principal, Richard Duffy, to do some introductions. Great, thank you. And uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for today's session. Uh, I'm sure everybody that's on the call already knows me. Um, my name's Richard Duffy. I'm the CEO and founder of SMB Solutions Cloud Services. I uh, am very, very pleased to have uh, Peter Eldon, who is the Senior Channel Development Manager at Datto, uh, joining us to present the majority of today's content. So just quickly, um, today's session is really about education. We are not here to try and sell you anything. One of the things that, um, that we have realized at SMB as the number of our customers has um, been rapidly increasing uh, over the last 12 months, is that there is a real need out there for people to understand a little bit more about their IT landscape, to understand what um, needs to be put in place, to understand why it needs to be put in place, and to understand generally the, the whole discussion around uh, security, around business continuity and uh, continuity management, and as I've been speaking to various people, not only um, those of you who are on the call today, but other customers, uh, it has become very, very clear that people are you know, looking for uh, as much information as they can get so that they can make the right decisions about protecting their businesses. We had so many organizations that, um, that we have spoken to recently who, we had been tossing up the idea of moving into the cloud and getting more of a remote working capability and have been putting off um, some of those discussions. But of course, um, with the impact of the recent COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of those discussions suddenly went from when we get to it to this is absolutely critical. Uh, and we had a lot of people out there suddenly saying to people, well, go and connect your computer into, the, uh, into our corporate network, your home computer, uh, and running into a whole range of challenges around that. The biggest thing that came out of that as we talked to people, those who did it successfully and those who did it less successfully, was that having prevention strategies in place to protect the organization, to protect the organization's data, uh, and to protect employees from making mistakes um, has been so much more important than the cure. So with that in mind, that's the focus of our, uh, our webinar today. And so I'd like to hand over to Peter to take us through today's content. And then I'm gonna come back at the end, we're gonna have some Q and A and you know, I'll also make a few closing comments to give you some potentially some next steps and talk about our next education session as well, uh, what we'll be covering there. So with that, Peter, over to you, thanks. Thank you very much, Richard. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. I know there's a lot on at the moment, so we do appreciate taking uh, a little bit of your time. Uh, from a little bit of housekeeping, if you could put yourselves on mute, um, and no cameras, as much as I've loved seeing all these various images of people not realizing their camera's on when they go to the, cat the toilet. Um, I think we've all had enough of those ones. So if you can stick your camera on mute, and, or your camera off, and um, your microphone on mute, uh, by all means, shoot away any questions you have into the Q&A and chat feature, and uh, I'll throw those questions to Richard at the end. And again, I'd like to thank uh, Richard and SMB uh, Solutions for asking us to come along and be part of this. So, uh, again, as Richard said, what we want to talk about is we want to talk about prevention being uh, significantly better than the cure and, and certainly um, uh, better than trying to go through the symptoms of the disease. Uh, and that's what Datto uh, is what we do. We try and provide um, numerous methods of protection and then one final solution to uh, to resolve any of, the, of these major issues. And, and what we're talking about here from issues is we're talking about um, a business continuity interruptions. 
Uh, and if you notice, I'm not talking about disaster recovery or backup. We're talking about business continuity interruptions. And they can look like anything. They can look like a malware attack uh, where your data is suddenly not available to you. It could be a power interruption. Um, it could be a not access to your building. Or, funny enough, it could be very much like the one we're in at the moment where we suddenly couldn't get people into offices um, and on public transport and then we had to move them to a work from home environment. Um, and one thing I will note as well is uh, generally when you're in a uh, business continuity problem, so when, when you're having a problem with your business continuity, that's when you're most likely to have another business continuity issue. And we'll talk a little bit about that in relation to, um, you know, the bad guys right now are taking advantage of the confusion and angst and transition from uh, or to work from home and are actually mounting dedicated attacks on businesses uh, to, for, you know, for financial gain. So uh, this is Datto. Uh, for people who don't know, is we're, we're a an American East Coast based uh, vendor. Uh, we only deal um, uh, with uh, resellers or so partners like Richard and the team. Um, we uh, do not do any direct business, and and you know there's a very clear ethos on that, which is we're extremely good at the business continuity side, and our MSP community, our managed service providers. Uh, are exceptionally good at uh, customer service and dealing with those customers. And that partnership works very, very well and has done for a number of years. So that's me. Um, I certainly have a better voice for radio than a face for TV, so we're going to move straight past that one. And I just want to tell you just a little bit about Datto. And the reason for that is because we're talking about uh, customers trusting uh, Richard and his team and ourselves with your data and the protection of your data. And so you need to understand that that is a, a trust that it can be earned and, and is deserved. So as an organization, um, we've been going around since 2007. We have offices um, in every continent um, other than the Antarctic. And we have uh, data centers in, in all those continents as well. Uh, as I said, we're 100% channel only. We've got over 1,700 employees, and 70% of our employees are either building our products or, or supporting them. So we're very much a technical business. And the important part of what's down here is, and I'll just get my little clicker so I can show you, um, is we have data centers in Australia. So we have one in Sydney and we have one in Melbourne. And that's relevant because uh, there are numerous data sovereignty requirements on businesses uh, in Australia and also outside of Australia. And we have um, the Data Breach Notification Act, which is a, a government-run bit of legislation in relation to the protection of your customers' data. And we will talk a little bit about that in this, in this webinar as well. And so having um, data centers located in Australia and making sure that our data does not tra transverse out of Australia is very important in that uh, legal and legislative uh, requirements. And uh, we've got now over 500 petabytes of data under our protection. So that's a significant amount of data around the world that data was protecting. Now, you know, we talk, we're talking about um the the prevention is better than the cure and it is very much the case when we're talking about protecting not only our data but our customers privacy and there really are five steps to safeguard your data and you know it, it, there are two there are two conversations here there's a there's a legal requirements on you in the sense of well i've got to protect my customers information but there's also the importance on a business protecting its own data because the, the custom business's data is its lifeblood. So I would say is that you know the two go hand in hand. If you're taking all possible steps to safeguard 
your business's data, then by logic, the next logic step is you, you're also protecting your customer's information. And both of those are critical. One, from a legal standpoint, but the secondly is if you don't have access to your company's information, you can't run or operate your business. So those five steps are uh, first off a firewall. And, and this is as technical as I'm going to get. Richard and the team will be able to help you with this. But a firewall is the best way I can I give you an analogy on that is imagine a bouncer at a nightclub. He stands on the door and decides who's going to come inside the venue. And that's very much what your firewall does. It, it stands there and checks the, the information coming into your, into your network and says yes or no. Uh, you know, is he going to let you in with those shoes or not? And that's what the that's what the bouncer does, and that's what the firewall does. And again, it's a security uh, Scott Stockgat and and the team, uh, Richard and the team will be able to tell you more about what a firewall is. Secondly, a spam filter. So when I talk to a lot of people uh, and I say, um, do you get sick with, sick of it when your spam filter um, catches emails that weren't spam? And they go, yes, I do. And I go, brilliant, because that's what you want. You want your spam filter to be wound up a little bit stronger, and so it's actually getting a few false negatives. Because that spam filter is critical in ensuring that uh, on incredible information, incredible uh, emails from credible sources is getting into your mailbox. Because unfortunately, uh, the humans, the, the staff in this whole scenario are the weakest link in this. And so the more the technology can limit those um, uh, dodgy or, or uh, unreputable emails from getting into that mailbox, then the less likely, less likely they are to be clicked on. So um, server antivirus and the endpoint antivirus. And again, this is critically important that a strong business grade antivirus and malware detection software is being used on uh, both desktops and servers. And it's critical right now in this work from home environment is that we're using the same level of business grade security on PCs or laptops that may be, might have been sat at home for a while whilst they're connecting into the network. As I said, uh, the nefarious organizations um, are not being idle while we're in this current um, uh, new reality, and they are actively attacking work from home environments because they see them as a weaker link compared to lockdown um, uh, business grade um, uh, networks. So making sure that the same level of security and um, the same quality of product is on any um, device that is coming into your network is critical and making sure that you're using a, an MSP that is providing remote management and monitoring tools to make sure that patching is up to date is very, very important as well. And again, this is very much an overview that um, that the team will be able to give you more of a, an in-depth um, coverage. And what I'd recommend is that you go back to the guys and go, do I have all of these? And get them to explain what it is you've got and how that's helping you in, in your, in your uh, business data protection. The next one is super important. And it's something that we don't see. Well, if we go back 12 months ago, we didn't see a lot of. And we're now seeing a, 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 a significant increase in staff training and cybersecurity awareness. And this uh, really should be enshrined into your custom, your business documents, just like your anti-bullying policy, uh, harassment, workplace health and safety, your mission statements, your cybersecurity statements and accepted use policy should be in those documents and they should be an organic document that, that your staff are aware of. And what I mean there is, is now you've moved to a work from home environment. If you had a cyber um, a checklist, have you then modified that to talk about the blurring of the lines between uh, a work PC and a home PC. 
So while people are at work, they're using a work PC. If they go to an inappropriate site from work, you've got a conversation you can have with them. But what happens if someone's using a home PC now to do work for you and they go to an inappropriate site that has an effect on your business? Did you clearly state what the risks are or what the consequences are to, that, are to a, a, an employee? Do they understand what those potential risks are? So all of these things can be brought up in staff training and should be documented in um, your policies so in the event of an incident, there can be behavior modification and in some cases, um, uh, evidence um, that could be used in a case on your behalf or helping you out of a case. And final, finally, and what we believe is the most important um, a pre a prevention, is a recent and easily recoverable copy of your data. Now, this is the bit I'm going to spend the most time with today, um, and that's because that's what we do. <laughs> but it's also because it's what we believe is the most important part. Because if we look at everything else that we've spoke about in those those. Uh, risk mitigation. So we talk about antivirus, we talk about employee training, patch management, which comes from that uh, remote monitoring and management tool I spoke about. We talk about uh, uniform threat management. All of these are preventative. So they have to work 100%, 100% of the time. The only one of these that actually recovers you from once an event has started to happen is this easy to recover copy of your data. So what this is, is an effect a time machine that allows you to go back to before the event. So be the event a physical event where, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a, been a, a burst uh, water main and your data center is flooded, where well, we can go back to before that and recover that data, or be it from a cyber attack where someone has fully encrypted your email, your, your data, we can go back to before when that happened and recover that data from that point. And this is, this is the best slide I can explain what we do. And as I said, this is as technical as I'm gonna get, so please just bear with me just a little bit. And so what we do to provide a business continuity solution is um, with Richard and the team, we put a device into your premises. And that device speaks to all your critical infrastructure, be it physical servers, virtual servers, and it can also do politically important PCs and the likes. And what that does is it takes a snapshot of those servers and holds a copy on the physical device. And when I say a snapshot, what I mean is, it's not just your files it's backing up, but it's taking a snapshot of that entire server at that moment. So the drivers, the operating system, the, your critical data, everything. And it holds it on the Dado device. What we also do is through our own IP, is we send a copy of that regularly to our Dato cloud, which is in Sydney and Melbourne. So from a disaster recovery standpoint, you've got a world a world-class best practice solution here. You've got three copies of your data, two of them held off-site. And that's a really good disaster recovery solution. But where the smarts are in our solution is that we also have redundant CPU and memory in these devices. So let's say that you have a micro event on site. Let's say that you lose a server or a PC on your site that you use for your practice management software or whatever it is, um, a CRM or whatever it is. The team, Richard's team can instantly virtualize that server on the Dado device. So your team would then be working from the Dado device unbeknownst that there was an, actually pr an actual problem with that server. Now, a team then can be sent out to fix that server in the background. It might be a Dell warranty job or whatever it is, and that might take six to seven hours or a couple of days or whatever it takes to, to get the parts out and get it replaced. All that time, 
your staff and yourself have still been working on that server from the Dado device. Whilst that's happening, we're also backing up all your other devices, and we're also backing up the device that we've virtualized. And then when Richard and the team have fixed up the issue, they can rebuild that server from the Dado device while you're still work using it, and then cut your team across. And so, in effect, giving you a true business continuity solution. Because if you've got one server on site and you use that for all your critical infrastructure and that goes down, then you can't do anything until that gets fixed. By having that Dado there, we solve that problem while that's been resolved and then use the Dado to rebuild this solution here as well. Now, we also have a SaaS-based solution for SaaS solutions like 365 and, and Gmail, and I'll talk about them in, in, in a minute. And all of this kind of combines together to give you a hybrid solution, regardless if you're on-site or in the cloud. But back to our on-premises solution. So let's say you're having a really bad day, and not only do you lose that server, but you lose the Dado device as well. So the, the room that you use to, to hold all your servers, uh, the air conditioning broke and everything overheated, or um, someone's drove a forklift into the building, right? There's lots and lots of different disasters that can happen. We can instantly virtualize everything that was on that Dado device in the Dado cloud. And we can provide that to you via RDP or a VPN. And what that means is, yes, you're still having a bad day. You've had a critical infinite in, in incident at your office and you've lost power, access, uh, the roof fell in, whatever. We can still keep your virtual lights on where we can provide whatever was on these servers to you and you can go to a serviced office or for example work from home as a lot of people are doing right now while Richard and the team resolve this issue. Then we'll provide that for you 30 day free of charge and we can send out a new Dado device which Richard and the team can then use to rebuild your environment. So again, a true business continuity solution. Um, if you think about a, jet, a normal solution where it be a backup where you've got USB drives or you might have a NAS, that's a backup solution. What that does is it means your data is kept somewhere else, but if you lose those servers through a, a virtual or physical event, you need to get new equipment or recover them before you can recover your data. And so the difference between a backup in an event could be downtime of you know, from eight hours to two to three days, as opposed to a business continuity solution that allows you to trade through that incident while you resolve it in the background. And all that's provided with 24 hour world-class support out of the US. And the reason I say that is because, you know, these solutions are disaster recovery solutions as well. And what I mean there is, is that, if you have a natural event that happens, um, and I think most of you guys are on, um, uh, on the Sunshine Coast, and I'm actually on the Sunshine Coast as well, coincidentally. So if you have an event that happens locally in your geographical area, then your service provider is affected by that event as well. So if it's a cyclone or floods or whatever, you know, you've got trouble getting people to work. Your service provider, Rich, has got trouble, trouble getting people to work. So what we do is we have a team um, that sit in these knocks in the US and they work 24 seven helping our partners help their end users through disasters. And these guys have gone through hurricanes in the US, um, cyclones. So if there's a, there's a really good article, if you do a Google search on Datto and the Whit Sunday Shire Council, you'll find a really good article in relation to how we help them get through uh, the cyclone that hit them a couple of years ago and made sure that we didn't have any downtime or lost any data. And this is what the, the devices look like. They just look like any other devices. They're not very uh, sexy for any other reason, uh, but they do change in size and configurability. So it doesn't really matter if you've got a lot of data or not a lot of data. 
the importance is, is the safety of that data and the team can show you how, how the different devices be it if you're in the cloud or if you're on site and how you can protect this. And the reason we say this is because we really think businesses need to rethink backup. Because when we used to think about disasters, we used to think about these. And, and any of my Queensland um, uh, people who are on with me at the moment, you might recognize this. This is Eagle Street in the floods from, geez, I think, I'm gonna, I think it's gonna be seven or eight years ago. Time flies when you're not flooding. But uh, yeah, this is a, the financial center of Brisbane uh, from a number of years ago. And these are the disasters we kind of had in our mind when we were building backup solutions. But they're not really the disasters that we see mostly or, or regularly. And if we talk about the most likely disaster to hit a business, unfortunately, it's their staff. It's the people working in the business. And you know, it, it's not really fair to blame them because the issue is, is that we've got numerous organizations who are actively trying to fool our staff into clicking on the wrong thing, going to the wrong site, giving access to the wrong email to allow these people to steal our data away from us. And if we look at the stats, and these stats come from the Privacy Commission, um, Human error takes up 58% of downtime incidents. And when you times, uh, when you add ransomware to human error, you've got about 98% of all downtime incidents are connected to these two. <clears throat> Hardware failure is an issue, but we're getting better these days in building redundancy into our hardware. And natural disasters, well, um, I mean, 2020 has been a heck of a year. Um, and yes, we've seen natural disasters in Australia, you know, more than, than most. And when they hit, you know, they are significant. But luckily, you know, we, we're not hit by them that often. But ransomware and human error, unfortunately, they are the things that we see the most. Now, this is an interesting slide. It's not right now, but bear with me. It does get a little bit better. <clears throat> so... The first ransomware attack, the first crypto attack we saw in Australia was 2013. And that took the form of uh, an Australian federal police scam. So what would happen is you'd be working on your computer and all of a sudden everything would freeze up and a big Australian federal police logo would appear on your screen and a message underneath said, you've been doing something illegal or immoral on your computer and you're getting a $1,500 fine. And in 2013, 50% of people were doing something illegal or immoral on their computer. So a lot of them kind of went, oh, that checks out. And, uh, and you'd be surprised how many people paid that $1,500. And you'll be more surprised because it was a money order to India was how you paid this, right? So. Clearly now, no one would pay that. But in 2013, when this first one dropped, people were flooding to pay this supposed AFP fine. Now, here at Dado, we look at all time before 2013 as BC, before crypto. And all time after 2013 is AC, after crypto. And we're the only organization in the world who uses BCAC. That's copyrighted to Dado. <clears throat> All right. Joking aside, though, this is really important because if your backup solutions or strategies are from on or around this date, then they are not equipped to protect you for events after this date because this was a game changer. Before this, everything we built around backup strategies was based on a physical event. Uh, the servers have died. We've lost motherboards. When someone's broken the servers or stolen the servers, uh, the buildings burned down. We weren't sitting here and worried about um, organizations actively trying to steal access away from us 
and then sell it back to us. And that's an absolute game changer. Now, this is what it looks like. So if you've seen one of these, then you've had a bad day, okay? And uh, you know, I, I wanna be clear on this as well because I think there's a little bit of misconception as to who, who our competition is here, who the bad guys are. These aren't fat kids sat in the mum's basements trying to crypto your data to get extra dungeons and dragons credits. These are nefarious organizations and in some cases, enemy states. So as a small and medium business, you're up against enemy state software, so military grade software that the bad guys are moonlighting at night to attack Australian businesses to gain a little bit of extra money by using uh, to, by using malware, and you know what happens is you click on an email from an AGL or whatever, it encrypts your files, and then this pops up. And, and as I said, then you're having a bad day. Now, this is a multi-billion-dollar business. There's one um, crypto which was doing a million dollars a day in Bitcoin payments, right? So this is significant money, and is more profitable and easier to launder than um, guns, drugs, or anything else. So these are criminal organizations that are spending time and effort in looking at new and better ways to attack businesses and get past all those preventative measures to get to data. Um, and this is an interesting one, which I'll quickly just show you, because um, this one here, if you see this, it says you've been cryptoed, and you can get your data back the fast way by just paying a Bitcoin. This is a little bit of an older one. Or you can restore your files the nasty way and get three other people infected with this malware. And if you get three other people infected, they'll give you your data back. So they're running Amway for malware, which is pretty terrifying. And you know th this is a good point, right? There is at least one employee who will click on everything, and and, and that's me at Dado. Unfortunately, I'm the worst of it. And when we look at the cost of recovering from malware attacks, if you don't have a business continuity solution in place, then it's quite scary. So what we're seeing now, we do a um, a uh sorry we do a survey every year of all of our partners and we get an idea of what's happening from a malware standpoint in the community and so this is from 2019's responses and what we found is the cost to recover from a malware attack is 23 times more than the amount of the ransom okay now, the ra average ransom is increasing as well. So we see there it's getting up to nearly, nearly $6,000, right? But the average cost of downtime to a business to recover from a malware attack is $141,000. And that's because if you think about if you get a malware attack and if worst case it gets into your, your USB that you're using to do your backup, then there is a significant amount of time and cost to get your MSP to try and recover and find a cleaner version of your data, or worst case, you need to negotiate with the bad guys, and, and a lot of people do, you know, they'll, they'll wanna charge you $20,000, and you go, look, I'll tell you what, we'll pay you 5,000, and you end up paying them 11, okay? But there's a whole um, privacy issue there as well, because you've definitely had a data breach. If you have to pay the Latvian mafia $11,000 to get your data back, well, you're damn sure you're gonna to have to tell the, um, the Data Breach Notification Act that you've been breached because you don't know what access they've taken to that data and you don't know what they've put in the back end as well. Because if you do pay the bad guys, you've done three things. Firstly, you've told them that you exist because a lot of this stuff is just spam, so they don't really know if they found someone or not. Secondly, you've told them that your data is important to you, okay, because you're willing to, to spend money. And third, you've told them that you've got money, so you can guarantee they will be back. Now, this is all sorts of businesses that have been affected by this. 
Um, you know, if we look at this, this is just um, uh, organizations that have notified um, the privacy commissioner of significant breaches of their customers' data in 2019. And it, it's a bit of a who's who's. I am terrified that in some way, my um, sausage from Bunnings, my sausage sizzle could be affected by this. So I'm hoping they're on top of that. That's uh, the, one, the one thing I've still got going in all this craziness. And if we look at a, a real-time one that um, had a significant impact on the Australian market, um, this was a medical hospital in Melbourne. And they uh, had a malware attack, and it, this, this is a horrible story. They, they were using an MSP, they thought they had backups, they got a malware attack, the backups were deleted, and they had nowhere to recover that data. And um, they had 15,000 patient, patients data that was breached and lost, and they had to stop um, surgery because of this event. Now, that was clearly a resume defining event for that IT manager. And clearly the MSP they were using at that time, they are now no longer using. And they're talking about it taking two employees over two years to try and recover that data back. So you can imagine the cost, the loss of reputation, all because uh, not only did it get past those security measures they had in place, but they didn't have a strong, easy to recover copy of their data, which meant that in that worst case scenario where they get past the AB, they get past your staff training, they get past the remote monitoring, they get into your data, they encrypt it, with that easy to recover copy of your data, you just go back in time to before the bad guys encrypted and you recover your data from that point and it's as if they never happened. Now, I'll give you another little story which is quite interesting because this gives you an idea about how they're using social engineering um, to get your data and how to get access to your data. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure if anyone knows who this, this gentleman is, but this gentleman here, um, I don't know if you remember, about three years ago at a Christmas um, in Hawaii, a alert went out to the whole of Hawaii saying that a ballistic missile was inbound and it was going to blow up the whole island of Hawaii. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, this guy here, uh, this is a picture from his social media post. And this guy was the man who was in charge of that whole process. And this is just a picture that he put up there, um, of just showing him at work and showing how important he is. Now, why do I tell you this story? Because I was in Hawaii when this happened, and I got this message on my phone. And I was sat on the toilet when this message came in, and might I tell you, uh, being on the toilet is the perfect place to be when you get a message like that on your mobile phone. And this, as I said, this went out to the Hall of Hawaii. Now, can anyone see any problems with this picture that this guy posted prior to this event? Now, bear in mind, they, the US haven't said why that, that, that text went out. And that text went out in error. There clearly wasn't a missile heading inbound, but for 34 minutes, we all thought we did. So. If anyone can see, and there's prizes if you do get this, but this is a picture that he put on online, and if you zoom in, there's his password and username. So he put that on screen, right? And they didn't say what happened, but not long afterwards, that went out, and that guy is now employed somewhere else. So this is when we talk about the, the methods that people are using to get access to your data, they're trawling your social media accounts. Um, they're doing things like seeing when your CFO is on, uh, they're looking at his LinkedIn, they're looking at his, his Facebook, they're seeing that he's on holiday, and then they might send an email saying, hey, listen, I need you to move $5,000 to an account. We're buying a business or something like that. These are all methods that they're using 
to attack and infiltrate businesses to then uh, take away and, and give you not either steal money or take access away from your data. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the final little bit I just want to go on to is about the Notifiable Data Breach Act. Now, this is an act that came in in um, February of 2018, and this was put forward by the Australian government, and it covers the majority of Australian businesses. And um, Richard and the team can give you a little bit more information about if, if you're covered by this act, but my recommendation would be to act as if you are covered by this act. And what this act basically does is it tells you what you need to do when you get breached. And the reason that the government put this in place was there were so many breaches happening, they had to put in a policy to tell you what to do when, when it happens. And this is about how you notify your customers that you potentially have lost their data. And what's interesting about this is it gives us some really interesting insight as to how businesses are being attacked in Australia today. And if we look at this from, from the latest sector, human error and malicious criminal attack, again, make up 95% you know, of all incidents that were reported. And when we look at it here, social engineering, cyber incident, visa increasing, social engineering is increasing significantly. And what social engineer, I'm talking about phishing, where they pretend to be an email of, um, uh, as I said, an employee, or they pretend to be an email from maybe a distributor, and they'll give you a new um, uh, ABN or a new account to put their payments into, and then all of a sudden you've been paid the wrong person for the last six weeks. These are social engineering personal and impersonations that are, are also cyber attacks. And the next thing I want to talk about, and, and I'm, I'm nearly finished, so I do thank you for all your time, is I just want to go into a little bit more about the, the, the new form of attacks we're seeing and some additional protection around SaaS. So I would assume that most of you guys are using uh, Office 365 or G Suite as your um, collaboration and productivity tools, and particularly since uh, the work, for, work from home migration has happened. Most people are using this. We uh, at Dado and, and, and Richard and the team provide uh, SaaS backup solutions for G Suite and 365. And I'm sure you're sitting there going, well, hang on a second, but if I've got my data in 365 and it's in the cloud, aren't I protected? Well, the answer is yes and no. So, when you move your data to 365 or to G Suite, um, both Google and Microsoft have what they call a joint responsibility program. And what that means is they're going to look after you, uh, or protect your access to the cloud. So they're going to make sure that you can get into the cloud and that their hardware is up and they've got power and their software all works but it's your partner, or it's your MSP or you as the end user's responsibility to protect the data held within the cloud. And the issues we talk about there can be just straight human error, right? Fat fingers, someone deleting information on mailboxes where they shouldn't. Um, it could be malicious insiders, and this is something that we've seen happen sig a significant increase in this. And what I mean there is by people... Um, leaving a business and just intentionally deleting very important SharePoint files and folders. It could be um, someone stealing money and trying to change and alter um, invoices and delete that, their, their, um, their tracks. And also external hackers. So we're seeing a significant increase in malware and hackers directed at 365 and, um, and G Suite. And it's not just ourselves and Richard who are telling you that you need to, to have a, a backup for these solutions. Um, one of my favorite things in the world is to read terms and conditions. Really great if you're struggling getting to sleep. Um, this is Microsoft's terms and conditions for 365 on, I think it's page 6,984, I think. I'm kidding, I don't know what page it is. 
But, but what they're saying there is Microsoft have no liability for the deletion of customer data or personal data described in this section. So what they're saying is, and they encourage, is that customers should have a third party keep a copy of their data that's easily recoverable in the event that you have something happen to your 365 tenancy. And G Suite say, say the same thing. And these are real issues. We've seen one in three companies have had, uh, have lost data in SaaS applications, and we're seeing a significant increase in these nefarious organizations focus on SaaS because they're seeing that businesses are moving to SaaS. So just as you know, you're going, okay, well, let's move to 365 because it gives us a ton of productivity tools while we work from, from home, the bad guys are sitting there going, well, a lot of our market's moving to SaaS, so we need to come up with SaaS attack software to try and steal that data away from customers as well. So, you know, what we're, what, to sum up what we're talking about here is prevention has many um, methodologies. So prevention is prevention. At the very earliest stage is preventing staff from clicking on the wrong thing. That's in training. Prevention is also preventing the bad email getting to your staff member by making sure you have those layers of, of, of technology that lie on top of your staff to make sure it doesn't get to it. I would argue though that your staff are more important than your technology because the person looking at a dodgy email is still so much cleverer than a firewall or an AV or anything else to just go, you know, look, what well, that just looks a bit weird. I don't think I'm going to click on that. So staff training is so important, and I please encourage you to do that. And then prevention is also preventing an attack from being successful. And that's where data really comes in, and that's where uh, the team and Richard and Tim can really talk about what we do. So we cannot guarantee that you will not have a, uh, a malware attack or you will not have a business continuity incident. However, we can guarantee that that incident or attack will not be successful because we can easily and quickly recover your data to before the disaster or before the attack, regardless if it's living on your premises or in 365 or G Suite. And with that, I am gonna thank you very much for your time, and I'm gonna shut up, and I'm gonna leave it over to see if we have any questions, and bring in Richard again to see if he, he has any closing comments he'd like to make. Fantastic, thank you very much, Peter. Um, every time I get the opportunity to, you know, to revisit this topic of security, um, and the prevalence of these attacks uh, and, and look at the statistics around how much it's happening, it sends a shiver up my spine. Uh, it is the one thing that keeps me awake at night. Now, most of you who are on this session are already customers of, of ours and we are hosting your SAP Business One data. You can rest assured that all the best practices that Peter is referring to um, for the protection of your data on, uh, on our cloud and, and on a server, we are taking. So we are already managing and looking after your SAP Business One data according to these best practices. What worries me and what prompted us to decide that this was an area of business that we, we really needed to, to go into was that as we spoke to so many of our customers, not necessarily um, you sitting on this, on this session, but other customers that had no idea of what they had in place, that had no idea of whether or not they were protected, that had no disaster recovery plans in place, that didn't even know whether or not their antivirus was up to date, or if they had an antivirus, um, that's your endpoint protection. So, you know, we sat down and said, well, what are we going to do to help people with that? Uh, and so accordingly, we built our entire managed services 
uh, offering. Now, the, the focus of today's session has been on the business continuity and disaster recovery. And if, you know, the one thing about the computer industry, we're not short of any acronyms. So anytime you see BCDR, all right, that's what it's referring to, business continuity and disaster recovery. So you can, when you get to go to a party again, after all of this um, social distancing is over, you can impress your friends by talking about BCDR. Um, but that was, that was the main focus of today. But in our next sessions, we're going to talk to you about the, some of the, those other five points that Peter mentioned uh, as being, if you like, the five key vectors of your information security and your, and your, business, um, your business continuity. The next one we'll talk about will be how we protect um, servers and endpoints with antivirus um, anti-malware, anti-ransomware, uh, and firewall technology. So that will be our next session, uh, and we'll be contacting you about that um, when the time is right. So let me just give everyone the opportunity. If you would like to ask a question, um, please feel free using the interface to either raise your hand, um, or go off mute. It's probably better if you raise your hand and then um, we take you off mute and give you the opportunity to ask your question. Although most of you might be sitting there going, wow, that's so much to think about. I'm not sure where to go next. So feel free to raise your hand. I'm going to keep talking while you do that uh, just quickly uh, and tell you about some of the other things that we are doing to help you. So every aspect of the, what Peter talked about, we have available for you now, and you can reach out to us and have a conversation, whether it's about your business continuity and disaster recovery, whether it's about your staff training, making sure that your people are aware and have a structured training process in place. We, we partner with an organization called Know Before. You may have seen um, me writing about that, and they provide uh, world's best practice training um, and also auditing tools to check whether or not you are um, open to, to these risks, whether or not your staff are likely to click on these links. We can do all kinds of audits uh, and, and processes like that. And of course, we can provide for you the full data range of solutions. Uh, and as a matter of fact, many of you um, will also be aware um, of Datto because we already have deployed the, some of the Datto remote management and monitoring components onto some of your computers as well. But you'll also see that from time to time if we do a remote session with you in your SAP system, in your SAP session, you might see it pop up and say, hey, there's a, a Datto remote access session going on. Um, that's us um, taking care of those, uh, taking care of those processes using those Datto tools. So, um, so just want to make sure everybody does know how to raise your hand. So you'll see, um, in the, the system, um, that there is an option to look at the, um, to, to, to go and raise your hand. If you go and look at the participants list, you can see yourself there and you can raise your hand. Although it doesn't look like we've got any questions at this particular point in time. No, so I think, I think we, um, we, we absolutely blew every single possible question out of the water there. We've, <laughs> we've absolutely, absolutely. Possible scenario. <laughs> well, one, one thing I did want to make sure that you're aware of, we, uh, a number of months ago, we started publishing regular newsletters. Taylor is um, working um, really well uh, to put together these, these regular newsletters where we, um, communicate out not only what we're doing um, from a, a, an SMB solutions perspective around um, keeping your data safe and secure, but we also are publishing a lot of educational information. So if you are not receiving those emails, please make sure you get in touch with one of us and let us know. A lot of people are receiving the emails, but they're going into the junk mail. All right, so check your junk mail for emails from SMB Solutions. 
uh, and maybe add our domain smbsolutions.com.au to your uh, spam filter so our emails don't get filtered out. Or if you don't know how to do that, pick up the phone and ring us uh, and we'll help you go through that. If you want an audit on your systems, pick up the phone, give us a call. We have some tools um, that will help us do that and give you a written report on the current status of your security. And then uh, there was a question from, from one of our participants who's asking if my business data in SAP Business One is on SMB's cloud infrastructure, how is this data protected? Well, it's actually protected utilizing Datto technology and some other technologies. So we have inside our cloud, we have about 80 terabytes of um, available storage all fully redundant. So we do backups every day, not only database backups, but also disaster recovery backups, those snapshots that Peter was talking about. And we take those snapshots and they are stored offsite. So again, we are in that scenario whereby if our cloud gets breached, then we are able to quickly and easily bring all of our environments back up. Uh, and we can bring those back up in our existing data center on, on that virtual hardware that Peter was talking about or in another data center in another geographic location because we can access it from, from pretty much anywhere. So if you'd like to look at that in more detail, I'm more than happy to run through that with you and show you how we do all of that. There's nothing I like more than showing off our uh, technical infrastructure. I guarantee you after about five minutes you go, enough, make the bad man stop. Um, so, but again, any questions about that, please feel free to let me know. So it doesn't look like there are any, um, any questions. Oh, one, one last question. What's the value of scanning your business now? Well, we all know, and we're hearing it all the time. We are going to come out the other side of this current, um, crisis that we're in this current lockdown. And what we're finding is, is many organizations are looking at, at, at their operations now and saying, okay, when we come out the other side, how do we do it better? The value of taking action now is that whilst things are, for want of a better term, for many businesses, quiet, um, this is the time when you can take these steps. You can... Um, do a lot of these, these, this preparation, you can do a lot of this auditing with minimal uh, interruption, with minimal um, impact on your day-to-day -day operations. So again, we have a team of people, we've, we've hired more staff. Um, I feel, sometimes I feel a little bit bad about saying this, but you know, over the last couple of months, our business has actually um, significantly increased as more and more people have made the same decision that you have and, and moved to the cloud. Um, so we have a team ready, willing and able to work with you today uh, to help you address these kinds of uh, issues, have these discussions and help give you the peace of mind that you've got the right systems and processes in place to give you that business continuity and that disaster recovery. So with that, I wanted to thank Peter uh, who is a very busy man at the moment, um, spending, uh, was spending a lot of time flying around uh, the place, but now is well and truly like the rest of us locked down uh, and doing a lot of these virtual sessions. So Peter, thank you very much. Thank you to the Datto team uh, for putting all this together for us. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. 1300 44 20 59 is the number. Um, or reach out to us via email. And again, uh, we love hearing from people um, by telephone. I'm constantly telling my team, pick up the phone and speak to somebody if they've got a problem. Um, and you should do the same thing with us. If you've got questions, if you've got concerns, pick up the phone, talk to us. Uh, we're available 24 by 7 by 365 for emergencies. And of course, during normal uh, business hours for day-to-day for -day inquiries. So with that, I want to thank you, um, I want to thank Peter, and wish you uh, a great rest of day, and, um, and wish you uh, a secure and continuous business future. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, guys. Everyone have a lovely day. Um, thank you, bye.